What's up, guys? It's your girl, Little Fresh Sam. Today, we're in a different environment. This is the current speaker. And so we always have these like these photos, right? And it's like you can tell when things start to get more and more diverse. You know, I'll send me a photo. And that's me. And there you go. Yeah. We just can't go down the middle or in between. But I always like wonder what it's like to be her, right? Yeah. Or her. Like two women. There was no like female bathrooms um, except for the public one in the basement. Yeah. It should literally be the Supreme Court used to meet here. Um, but now they meet in their own building across the street. Um, there's a balcony too, but it doesn't look out to anything. Trouble, really. Nice boy. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. This is so beautiful. So the one in through the chamber, through the house chamber, is in the front, right? So then you can look straight, straight out. <laughs> I don't think I looked crazy at all, did I? <laughs> Those numbers are important to hear. Let's all take a moment and see Representative Leslie Herrick is in the room. Hi, Representative Herrick, thanks for joining us. Hi. How do I get my vet to leave his practice? Well, it's just kind of a thing. <laughs> Working out here and getting stuff done, and when I came and like my name was on the door, I was like, yeah, this is my little home. <laughs> I love it. Former state representative for House District 8, and she's now my mentor. And then this is my little family. So they all live um, down in Southern Colorado. And that's, yeah, that's, that's Obama. I was a baby, as you can tell, when I first met him. He was like, oh, what's your shirt about? And I told him what New Era was, and he just kept talking to me for at least 10 minutes. Well, what are, they, what, what are young people thinking about now? Like, what's going on? And I've never met an elected official who cared that much about what a staffer thought about life. <laughs> One of the seniors who was like, I drew you. <laughs> and he gave me, was like, Oh. <laughs> okay. Joe is my mentor. They assigned mentors at the beginning of the year. Okay. And Joe is my mentor. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. We've done some good stuff this We've year. Done some good the puppy's in here and, and, and Leslie has her somewhere around here. I yeah, think she's like, me a puppy? She demanded somewhere. that she be in the middle. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> but today we're here in the capital of Denver, Colorado with my girl, Leslie Harrod. Hey. hey. Um, <laughs> please tell us about yourself because there's so much I just want you to tell them. Yeah. So uh, I am State Representative Leslie Harrod. Uh, I represent House District 8 in Central and Northeast Denver. Um, I work here in the Capitol now. I'm a freshman legislator, so I've only been serving for one year. And I got to tell you, it's been crazy. <laughs> yeah. Things have just changed so much in my life, but also um, we've been able to do really good things for the people of Colorado. Um, in my first year, I was able to pass 11 pieces of legislation wow. and get them signed into law. So it's kind of crazy to know that some of the things that I've worked on are now law, right? Yeah. So whether it's helping homeless youth, looking at solar panels, or addressing you know tampons and corrections, I've been able to actually make change wow. at the state level. It's pretty That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it's fun. Like really amazing to hear all of that. Like you're, I know how amazing you are, but I didn't know like the type that came along with that you know and like that's that's really cool I'm like really proud and um first question yeah this, let's do uh, it yeah I was like googling and I'm like whoa you have a wiki page like <laughs> superstar over here um what in but in your wiki page it says that you're the first um african-american lgbt to get into the state representative of colorado yep that's like major yeah it's pretty cool so <laughs> I'll tell you two stories. Yeah, that please. wiki page. So there's yeah. all these moments, uh, especially in my first year in office, that were like, oh my God, this is happening. And so I just remember I was looking on my phone and I have Google alert set up. Yeah. And it was like Google alert for Leslie Hare. And I was like, uh oh, like what, what article am I in and what's going on? And it was someone set up a wiki page for me. And I was like, that's so cool to think that someone randomly decided to set up a page, a wiki page for me, and that I was like official, right? Yeah. Like, um, so there's all these like official moments in my yeah. life this past year that have been really fun, and that was kind of cool. But yeah, so I'm the first African American LGBT, openly LGBT person um, to hold elected office in Colorado. So to this date, we don't know that there were any openly LGBT African Americans serving in any elected office um, before I took office. Wow. And so that's pretty cool, right? Because yeah. I think as a as an LGBT person, um, 
I never thought I was going to be an elected official. As a black person, I didn't think I was going to be elected official, especially not in Colorado, yeah. right? Like, it's just not many of us. And so thinking about all those different things that felt like cards stacked against me, yeah. um, I set my goals lower, right? Or at a different level. It's like, you know, like, why shouldn't I? Yeah. You know, why can't I? Um, and I was like, why isn't this an asset? Why do I have to take it as, oh, these are cards stacked against me mm. as opposed to look at all my cards, yeah. right? Like I got a, a handful of cards that I can play now. Yes. And so, um, and so when I ran, you know, I was like, I'm going to run out. Uh, I'm going to run yeah, obviously pro black cause I'm black <laughs> yeah. and it's just going to be who I am, but I'm going to run as me, right? Like yeah. I'm not going to change who I am. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, and so we ran and I ran against, you know, a straight white cis male. Um, and it was tough, right? It was a tough primary. We we're both Democrats. And so we had a primary race, um, but I won. And at the end of the day, I not only became the first African-American um, LGBT person to hold office, um, I won with the highest vote count in Colorado history. Wow. And so that just tells you that actually different identities, who you are, as long as you're authentic and you really want to make change, you not only can win, but you can like win big. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so you like can reach for the sky and like you can get it. Yeah. You know, proof. So. proof. <laughs> um, OK. Another thing I read online is that you were um, inspired growing up by your mom, you know, yeah. by her um, ability to serve your family and then the nation. And um, she was in. The army. The army. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, one, are you still inspired by her? And what else inspired you as a kid? Oh, I'm, I'm always inspired by my mom. I mean, she's a single mom um, raising me and my brother. And, you know, she had some hard choices. She grew up in Oakland, California, uh, in poverty, right? Mm -hmm. um, she grew up in a time where the Black Panthers were on the rise. Um, and uh, police brutality against black and brown people was, like, the name of the game, right? Um, and she wanted a different life for her kids, right? Um, and so she had two options, really. Join the Black Panthers or join the military. That's it, wow. you know? I remember um, when we were stationed down in Colorado Springs, I was young, and we were going to... Um, we were going to the grocery store, the commissary, me and my brother and my mom, and she was in her uniform, and being an officer, it was the uh, people had to salute her, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this one guy wouldn't do it. He wouldn't salute her. And his wife was like, we're not going to salute you, inward, and then mm -hmm. uh, spit on her. And that's in front of me and my brother. And she stood there with all the strength in her, right? And didn't respond, didn't like kind of snap back. Instead, she was like, I'm going to need your reporting officer's name. Uh, we're going to report this. And then, you know, kind of had a conversation with us about how sometimes there's still racism in the world, right? Sometimes people mm -hmm. think that because you achieve a certain thing that they want to knock you down a few pegs. But it's on us to kind of rise above that. It made me think that, you know what, we're living a good life right now, but there's a lot more that we need to do to make this world a better place for all of us and to make this a country who my mom is serving our country, you know, yeah. um, that we can just all love. I love it. Yeah, so, so I still love her. She's amazing. She's a huge inspiration. That's so. really cool. Yeah. What inspires you now? Uh, everything. I mean, I just think there's so much beauty and inspiration in this world. But um, the number one thing, and, and you know this, I love speaking to young people mm -hmm. um, and going into the schools or going wherever they are and just telling folks, like, look, this is who I am. Who do you want to be? You know, yeah, and exactly. you can be that and more. And so they're like, oh, I didn't think I'd ever meet an elected official or like, you know, President Obama, like things like that. And I'm like, yeah, but you can too. Like my yeah. story is just, I walked in one day, right? And yep. I got, and I said, this is what I want to do or I went after that job with the president and um, and you can do it and yep. so that's what gets me is uh, working with the, the young folks I love it yeah yeah that's a really inspiring for sure yeah so like I know as a woman entrepreneur um, and being a, yeah like a woman entrepreneur like days get tough mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, on some like I know like I've had days where just like everything goes wrong. Um, Gary Vee relates being an entrepreneur to like being a firefighter. We're always fighting fires, you know? And so I remember like having days, you know, where I'm like, dang, like my whole state's on fire, you know? And um, what do you do on those days? Like what gets you out of bed? You know, I mean, uh, I'm required to be here by law. So, <laughs> so that gets me out. So that gets me out of bed. <laughs> um, and during session, we are required to be here. Um, and so that that's a big thing. But, uh, you know, I just... 
try to say focus on the work. I mean, there are things that fall um, or things that go wrong, but then you got to kind of pull that aside and say what went right today, Mm -hmm. um, what went well, or what am I fighting for? And it's always worth it, right? Like I'm fighting for those young people. Um, I'm fighting for a better life for all of us. I'm fighting to make sure that, you know, we have a place in this society and that we're not pushed out. Yeah. That makes it worth it. Yeah. So I think what just gets me out of bed is that, right? Like I'm, uh, when it's hard enough for me to get out of bed for myself, I remember that I'm doing this work for so many others. For so many others. You, uh, you have one of those most selfless jobs. <laughs> I mean, you're really, like, you're really showing up every day for someone else, you yeah. know? So Women Entrepreneurship Day, mm-hmm. you know, you, I kind of didn't really catch all of that day. Um, what, tell me more about that, and did you have anything with passing that day? Yeah, so um, women entrepreneurs are, like, running Colorado, right? Like, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. It's huge, and it's big in Denver, you know? And I don't think I knew that, right? Um, And so there's all these networks of women who are pulling together resources for each other and Mm -hmm. a support network for each other. And I think that's great, you know? Um, And so I have been asked to kind of get involved in some of these entrepreneurship circles, I think just because women want to inspire each other. And like you said, sometimes you have those days when you don't want to get up and go out, Mm -hmm. or there's not someone you feel like can relate to you and what your crazy hectic life is right and you realize there's so many that that can and do yeah and so they just want to create this sisterhood you know I'll say and I think that's great um and so you know my role in that was really small right I helped to um, get the proclamation and then to present the proclamation um, but what is I think so notable about that is that these women just kind of came together and said here's what we want to do and they did it right like they didn't have to know anyone or have some kind of like big deal going on or have some kind of name they just reached out they reached out to me and said hey you know will you come do this can you help us with this absolutely and so I think again it's like we can do whatever we put our minds to you know then they got the governor's signature Um, they had a lot of women there it became a day like an official day for the state of Colorado Um, and that's just through their own initiative that's so, really cool. Hats off to them. I, you know, honestly, I think I'd love to see more women of color in the mix, you know, but we're doing that, right? So we're showing up and we're, we're showing that uh, women entrepreneurs uh, look different, right? Yeah. We're diverse, I mean, we're, we're awesome, yeah. we're vibrant, like it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> all types, all everything. Do you ever feel like, um, do you like the spotlight and do you ever feel like, I don't know, just overwhelmed by it or how do you feel about it? You know, it can be overwhelming, sure. I mean, there's days when I'm sick, I don't feel good, I don't, I'm not into it, I'm like, and I got to pull my attitude together and, yeah. like, and go out and be in the world, and yeah, yeah it gets overwhelming. But you just kind of work through it, you yeah. know? But I don't think people realize how much it is, right? And so that's why I respect every single lawmaker I work with. Every single elected official I have a lot of respect for. Now, they could be... Republican, conservative, very different, I would think, from me, or different than on, on paper than I am. Yeah. But then we realize at the end of the day, we're just people. Yeah. Right? Um, and if I can understand their values and show them where we actually align, uh, it can change the whole conversation. Um, who they think are those Denver people, you know, or black folks, or LGBT people, or whatever that is. Whatever they've already got you labeled as. Uh, the labels, yeah. you know? And so I just remember that, right? And when I'm feeling overwhelmed or crazy or whatnot, one, I know that I have a colleague right there who's probably feeling the same thing. Yeah. Um, And two, it's just like, let's just do it, you know? And so if I am feeling a little crazy, so crazy that I feel like I'm not actually being effective or not getting things done, Mm -hmm. I just remember like to step back and maybe just get some quiet and like say, okay, how do I want to refocus for the day given that all these fires are happening that I'm going to need to put out? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, And you said earlier too that you, you know, you came when you decided to play this role, Mm -hmm. you came authentically. So it's not Mm -hmm. even like playing a, there's not even really a mask or whatever you want to call that. It's just like you being you, Mm -hmm. but being in the spotlight is hard. That is the one thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, it could be hard on some days, um, especially like today's thank you and shout out to you for like being here still, you know, you don't feel good. Um, But I know it is important to like show up and show up your best, no matter how you feel. Um, So I know everybody's got like their daily routines And maybe we'll talk about that later, but like, what are three things you do every day to like be a better person? Oh, I love this question, right? Like, I think it's a, I love that you ask this question. Um, Three, it made me think, right? Like, do I do three things every day? (laughs) Like to make sure to like be a better person, you know? Um, And I think 
one thing I always try to do is reach out, right? I try to reach out to people, other people, and like help in some way. Whether it's you know helping my staff with a new opportunity, like for, for professional development, yeah. or you know just helping my neighbor like uh, shovel her snow. You know, who's a, my neighbor's a senior, Miss Collins. Shout out. Uh, <laughs> shout out <Ms. laughs> pretty Ms. sure she won't be watching online, but <laughs> she's like 85. But. Um, the other thing I do is I just make sure that I'm there for my friends, make sure I'm there for my friends and my family. And so I want to make sure that the people I'm close with, even though my life is so crazy, yeah. that they know that I'll step back and take time for them all the time, yep. whenever they need it. That's really important. Um, and so, you know, I don't know that I do that every day, but it's something that I really try to focus on, Yeah. you know, um, so that's really important. And then what I do also is just kind of take time for myself, you know, because if I'm not good for myself, then I'm not going to be good for anybody else. Yep. That's good. And I think it's important for women, that's why I ask these questions, I think it's important for anybody to hear that successful people do something every day to get better, you yeah. know, because we need to work on ourselves. Everybody's human. Um, yeah. So one time I was asked, I was, uh, was at a somewhere, and somebody talked to me about being too old to oh. follow their dreams and, you know, that they can't start now. And so what would you say to that? Oh, you absolutely can. You can start whenever you have the dream, right? And it's never too late. I mean, if you had a dream to do something when you were younger and you haven't done it yet, it doesn't mean the dream is over, right? right? right. Like, you should just jump in and do it. And, yeah, as you get older, you have other obligations and things seem really tough. Or mm -hmm. you're like, how do I make the time for that? But quite frankly, if you don't, like, where, where are you going to be, you know? Yep. I think... It's not about an age thing, you know, like you can do it whenever it's whenever it's time for you. Um, but just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. No Nike intended. So most people, you know, as they become successful, people just see the success, right? They don't mm -hmm. see the 10 years prior of hard work. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because you specifically have 10 years prior of work in this building, which is yeah. so amazing. Um, but yeah, like I said, people don't see the shine. So tell us about like the diligence, like work, like all that, like hard work yeah prior to this yeah you know i didn't like wake up one day and become elected right, right. and i think that that's something that uh, some people do um but i did not and so uh you know it's been years of learning policy understanding how the state works understand how policy is made understanding the community yeah once you like kind of get in the spotlight you, people think that you just kind of showed up there right and unfortunately it takes a long time it yeah. does it takes a long time to get there and some people burn out before or they get discouraged um but it will happen you know yeah. if you keep fighting and you keep working hard um you keep learning from your mistakes yeah. God, i don't know how many mistakes i made right yeah. and like it's like if i just would have taken them as not lessons and just like failures and been done i wouldn't be here yep. you know but yep. i learn from everything exactly yeah that's good did you ever feel like with the cards that you were dealt that it was going to be impossible and that you weren't going to be able to accomplish what you accomplished absolutely yeah um you know i don't know I, it's funny because um there was a long path to get here my race was two years it was a two-year job interview wow. um and there was a time when we had the caucuses right and it's a we have a caucus and assembly process and it's how we get on the ballot when we got the votes back and um i lost oh wow i lost i came in second place um i lost by 20 votes out of a hundred and some but I had to just keep fighting, right? And yeah. so then I realized, like, you know, I'm going to take this loss, and I'm not going to lose again. <laughs> you know? Like, I like coming in first, so let's just keep doing that. Yep. And so um, and so I did. I took that, and I, I called my um, campaign manager, my campaign consultant. I said, um, here's what I noticed. What did you guys notice? What should we tweak? You know, what were my strengths? And we learned, and we moved, we moved forward. Um, we pushed forward. But yeah, there's been so many times I thought I couldn't do it, you know? Yeah. I feel like as a woman, boss, we get taken advantage of a lot mm -hmm. if we allow it. And so something I'm trying to learn right now is how to be, have a balance of like directness, bossness, and also like empathetic. You know, it's funny because I've gotten labeled... Uh, in some parts of my life, like as the angry black woman, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm like, what? I smile a lot. Like, what are you talking about? You know, um, and sometimes I'm angry and yeah. that just means I'm angry. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and, you know, sometimes we can get labeled all kinds of things. And as women who are leading, um, yeah, we get labeled a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, well, sometimes I do think I'm a bitch. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's just 
just a fact. <laughs> it just it just happens. Okay. And so that's okay. And that's okay. It's okay. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I think you have to treat staff with respect. Yep. Um, I think you should treat everyone with respect. Yep. Um, and uh, also, part of my leadership is being direct. I'm very honest. I'm very open. I'm very direct. And that comes off as some kind of way sometimes. But at, in the long run... I think people say, well, at least I know what I'm going to get from her, you know? At least I can trust what she has to say. At least I don't think she's playing me behind my back, which I don't do, you know? And so that's a part of of my leadership. The one thing I also know, especially for women, is that I'm not trying to be a man. I don't think, you know, like, oh, it's getting in the boys' club. I'm like, nope, you know what? Today you're going to come with me, and you're going to do my thing, you know? And we're going to talk about things on the floor that men would never talk about, you know? But that's who I am. And so I don't need to just fit some kind of mold. Um, I'm going to make my own. Yeah. You've. What exactly is your title? So I'm state representative. Mm-hmm. Of district of house of house district eight. So okay, um, yeah, state representative. My district is house district eight. Okay, uh, and it's Denver. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um, and you accomplish that. Yeah. What's next? Oh, good question. You know, this is like the question that they tell every politician not to answer. Oh, <laughs> well, we don't follow those rules. <laughs> um, in this game, it's so much about being ready. It's about timing, um, and it's about like fighting for what you believe in. And so, my thing is, is I'm, I'm a new legislator, and so I want to continue to do this job, and I want to do it well um, for as long as the people will have me, yeah. right? And so, I have to run again. I'm running on the uh, ballot in 2018. Okay. I hope to be reelected. If the people want me to continue to represent them, then I will continue to do that work. So I have to get reelected this next cycle, so 2018. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of campaigning, a lot of Yeah, more campaigning work. and everything, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, vote for Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier, um, you know, there's these really amazing groups forming in Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure this is fact. I Somebody told this to me the other day, but we are on the rise. We're one of the largest women entrepreneurship cities Denver mm-hmm, mm-hmm. growing in the western hemisphere I don't know what it is I don't know if it's a women thing I don't know if it I don't know what it is but like I don't find it so collaborative mm-hmm. I found it more competitive I find it more competitive mm-hmm. how would what would advice would you give to women um out there you know how we can how can we more be more collaborative yeah and I think it happens in so many different sectors but women have had to fight and women of color had to fight so long you know to kind of get just one little sliver of the pie and I think what's important to realize is that we can have the whole pie and we can make a cake right like we can do all of those things and so we don't have to fight over just one little piece and so look at the the female that you're working with as not your competition but as someone that can support you the only way you're going to do that though is that is get to know them on a real personal level right like actually value relationships and know that everyone brings values to relationships right so like work with my colleagues I'm like you know what I'm not gonna fight with you because we might run against each other one day for one position in some place one you know one way okay yeah or we might run together yeah you know because I think you're a rock star and let's maybe do that together and so I think that's really important to think about it's like the collaborations only build the empire you know it doesn't it doesn't take them down um I don't go into a room thinking, what can I get from that person? Yeah. How can I network this? You know, it's like, oh, can I make, make a new friend today? Right. Exactly. Can I actually connect with someone today? Yes. If not, I'm probably going to leave. You yep. know what I mean? Like, because yep. that does set up these artificial relationships it does. that lead to this competition. Right. And it's kind of, I mean, let me be honest, it's toxic. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're only looking at that and not looking at a person, yeah. um, it's toxic. And so watch out for that. You know? So versus like seeing a human, you know, a heart, yeah. a brain versus seeing like a title and like, what they can do for you exactly or dollar signs or, dollar or signs. like who they're connected with yep. you know because we can sniff those people out real quick yeah what if you like can say one thing you want to change the world in a way how is it you know i want to get rid of mass incarceration okay i'm pretty committed to that wow um and breaking down the prison industrial complex uh, I think that's really important. Um, I think we shouldn't uh, be putting dollar signs behind incarcerating people. And then it's also just supporting people for their unique selves. And so whether that's uh, supporting Colorado entrepreneurs, which I do a lot of work around that, uh, making sure that all of our young people can succeed. You know, I don't think that your level of education should be determined based on your zip code. Right? Right. But it is. It is. And so I want to kind of level that playing field as well. 
Um, so there's so many things that we can do to really make sure that folks really have equal footing, right? And mm-hmm. a real chance to succeed. And those are the things that I'm working on. It's the work. Man, you yeah. got a hard job. Yeah. You know? But you have a really amazing job. It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Well, that um, basically sums up everything I had to talk to you about today. We can awesome. talk later, but um, this was great. Thank you so much for coming today. And thanks yeah. for showing us around this tour. And I don't, I've never even been in the Capitol, so this is a great first time. I really yeah. appreciate it. No problem. This is the people's building, so anyone can come. Uh, you know, anytime like a building is open, I think we're open till five or so um, and come check it out and if you have an issue or anyone has an issue that they want to work on or they want to address they can call me and we can figure out you know come testify maybe um, and we'll figure out how to plug you in perfect yeah well, there you guys go yeah official <laughs>